Welcome to this installment of Locked On Grizzlies, where we bring the hammer down a little bit. DeMichael Cole is back, the voice of reason. He thought I was too positive yesterday. We'll uh, start off with the bad news on today's show. Plus, dream a little dream, you freaking dreamers, looking at Giannis Antetokounmpo betting odds, the Memphis Grizzlies in the mix potentially, and of course, the Lakers Grizzlies big game tonight. We'll talk about that and more. Let's lock in. You are Locked On Grizzlies, your daily Memphis Grizzlies podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, hello. Once again, this is another episode of Locked On Grizzlies. You are locked in with Joe Molinax, one of your hosts. And it's always nice to be able to say one of your hosts because that means the belated birthday boy, DeMichael Cole, back in the saddle again. Good to see that you didn't destroy Beale Street too much, partner, and you've recovered and you're you're back, ready to get back to work after a well-deserved uh, break from your birthday. Oh, yeah, for sure. And I uh, appreciate everyone for all the uh, birthday wishes and trying to get back to everybody in due time. So uh, thank you all uh, for all the birthday wishes. But, yeah, we had a good time. And uh, now it's time, to, you know, for the fun stuff, the real fun stuff that we've mm. uh, come to cover with this team. I heard I... Uh, I missed I missed a, a game that didn't go too well, Joe. And oh. and I'm you know I, I wasn't I wasn't too in tune. Like I was really trying to get away. But one sure. thing that I noticed was like I, I said that Zach Eady. I was like on the show we recorded before. I was like he's got to dominate that team. And I saw Zach Eady was dominating. So I was like okay, they you know it it, it was just too obvious. But then yeah. they lose. Josh twenty five. He's spinning around and all that. I'm like. Like this i get on social media just a little bit and you know i'm seeing some of the reactionary things being said mm-hmm. and i'm like okay joe monex might have some things to say and you get on the podcast you're like oh it's nah, okay man. everybody we're i'm good. happy we're still gonna be a top three team in the west oh, you're man. calling me soft i don't like that you're gonna have to like i, I said you're I'm, gonna have to I'm, be I'm, the judge jury and executioner here in a minute I mean, who's who this guy who, who took over oh. joe molinax body yeah. getting soft you know, but, in my but i think age. the people the people might like it joe you know you mix it up a little bit you keep them off guard i think people's got to the point they're like oh yeah they 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 think they expect you to bring the hammer every time so yeah you know you got a nice little curveball go with your fans it's, it's just hard for me to care too much about a november basketball game but i digress <laughs> Uh, today's episode of Lockdown Grizzlies is sponsored by Game Time. Download the Game Time app as soon as you can. Big fan of Game Time, and you should be as well. Create an account. Use the code Lockdown NBA for twenty dollars off your first purchase. We are free and available here at Lockdown Grizzlies wherever you get podcasts. As proud members of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team each and every single day. Like, comment, rate, review, subscribe. Apple, Spotify, YouTube, Amazon, literally anywhere you get a podcast. Become an everydayer. Check the Michael and I out each and every time that an episode drops and friendly reminder locked on grizzlies now has a newsletter introducing the locked on grizzlies daily newsletter a one-stop shop for ultimate team and league coverage delivered right to your inbox sign up for free now at lockdowndaily.com that's lockdowndaily.com and start your day with the all-new free locked on grizzlies newsletter to michael you were tuned out a little bit understandably so for your birthday but obviously you're back you've caught Mm -hmm. up you Mm -hmm. heard my sunshine and rainbows i've started calling Mm -hmm. zach Eady the canadian nightmare uh, based off of Cody Rhodes, the American nightmare, you know, <laughs> since only Hakeem Olajuwon, the dream, yeah. and Edie put on the type of show uh, as rookie bigs that happened yep. in Brooklyn. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm feeling good about Edie. John Morant is box office superstar material once again. You're here, though, to be the bearer yeah. of bad news. And in fairness to me, mm-hmm. I did talk a little bit about what you're, I'm sure, going to be discussing. Discussing, excuse me. Jalen Wells, Santi Aldama, those guys going 0 for 11 from beyond the arc. Why would you expect the Memphis Grizzlies to win a basketball game? Uh, The lack of defense on Dorian Finney-Smith, those are things that I discussed, but I guess maybe in my positivity around yesterday's show, maybe the the cold, hard truth of Memphis losing a game that they should have won, that is uh, something that you're going to remind us all of. Yeah, uh, he, you played the Nets twice on the second leg back to backs both times. Yeah, I mean, the, the schedule makers are trying; they're trying to give it to you. They're, they're, trying they're to not, help you out after yeah, the tough start. They're trying to give it to you, and and the Grizzlies, you know, lost both of those games. And again, we keep talking about how tough the Western Conference is, and you know how closely competitive you know the standings are going to be over the course of the season. These are the type of games you come back and look back at, and you say, "Man, we lost to the Nets." 
on the second leg of a back-to-back for them on a traveling back-to-back uh, the first time coming to Memphis and whatnot. But, yeah, uh, two very winnable games. I think that's the disappointing part about that. But uh, it's really not even just about the game to me. Um, now, uh, there's a duh part to me, what I'm about to say, but, you know, just just let me explain it a little bit. And uh, I just still don't have much confidence in this team's ability to shoot. It's it's hard for me to watch the Grizzlies and say this team is going to be the team that shoots the basketball better than any of the years other than in any any of the other years under Taylor Jenkins. But two well, of the guys that they're counting on for that are the ones that were the biggest problems on Monday night. Again, Wells yeah. and Aldama, zero mm-hmm. for 11. Zach Eady made 11. a three. Those Zach guys e- didn't. That's a massive problem. It's, it's, it's a problem. And – the dub part of this is, yeah, there's no the, – you're arguably probably your four best shooters, you know, from an average standpoint. Guys who are going to be above league average, which is around 36%, Vince Williams, Luke Kennard, uh, Desmond Bain, and even Cam Spencer. I, I highly doubt he shoots under 36% as an NBA three-point shooter. So those are four guys who are very much going to, you know, make a lot of three-pointers when they get back. But at the end of the day, I always break it down to it's this simple. Those guys aren't really going to be on the floor a lot together because they all kind of, especially Luke Kennard, Desmond Bain, and Cam Spencer, they all pretty much play the same position. And Vince Williams is going to, you know, be on the floor and whatnot. But then you have the Marcus Smart name, which like me and you, we'll talk about that over the course of the year and whatnot. But uh, you're most likely going to be closing games at this point with some some way, shape, or form. It's going to be John Morant, Jaron Jackson Jr., and maybe Marcus Smart on the floor. Three guys who are below league average three-point shooters at this point. Josh said he wants to shoot more three-pointers this year. Uh, he's not been shooting it well, to say the least. Jaron Jackson Jr., same thing. So uh, it is definitely concerning. I think it's it's fair to kind of call it out at this point of the season because uh, it is something that could be fixed, again, uh, with the way they, you know, some of these guys, you know, are coming in lineup. We know that uh, John Morant has his hot stretches and whatnot. But yeah, uh, eight of eight of thirty. Like I'm, I'm at this point. You know, I've been one of the biggest advocates of the Santi Aldama leap as a three point shooter, and he's had a couple off games. You know, shooting the basketball. So, uh, yeah. Still a pretty small sample size for me, though, yeah. to, to really kind of write him off at this point. No, no, and no. Nobody, I'm not writing him nobody off. Nobody is more aware that Santi Aldama needs to have a strong season than Santi Aldama, right? Every game that he shoots mm-hmm. as poorly as he did, he can probably almost feel the money being taken out of his future bank account. <laughs> I am I'm understanding of your perspective, and I do think that the three-point shooting is a major concern. And the Marcus Smart thing that you mentioned – uh, becomes even more interesting when we talk about uh, trade betting odds with Giannis Antetokounmpo coming up here next on the show. Obviously, it wouldn't help the three-point shooting problem, but I-, I do think that you have a window there between him and someone who, not to pat myself on the back too much, and it is still a small sample size, Yeah, Brandon Clark is falling out of favor slowly but surely in mm-hmm. terms of what he's able to do for this Grizzlies team. It's not time yet, but those two contracts combined with a couple of first-round picks to a team that maybe thought they were going to be better than they actually are could perhaps get you some three-point shooting and a star caliber type of three-point shooter, depending on the squad. Uh, it, it's too early to really kind of get too but, excited but here, about here's that. My, here, here's my thing with that, too. Like, mm-hmm. um, and, and this played devil's advocate a little bit like if you yeah. add you add that so-called star three-point shooter uh it's most likely going to be a three right you're not taking jar Dez off the floor sure and jaron jaron's going to be uh, there so it's going to have to be a three mm-hmm. i like vince williams i like his impact i think gg jackson um is going to continue to you know be a prolific scorer i'm not really trying to take minutes away from those guys when they get back more more so vince um clearly higher probably on Vince uh, than, than a lot of people because of just the impact stuff. Like he's going to do the dirty work, but he shoots the ball really well. He always has G league uh, with the Grizzlies going back to college. So it, it have to be someone really good to, to, to make me move the needle there because uh help is definitely on the way to, you know, with the shooting, with, with some of the names that, that we mentioned earlier, but as far as the trade goes in that area, 
it it'd have to be a big swing for me, Joe. I'm not I'm not going out and getting a Corey Kispert or something like that. Mm. No disrespect to him, but you know he because he's a shooter. He can shoot really no, well. Sure. But I gotta go get a you know a real needle mover if I'm taking minutes away from those guys. I think your definition of needle mover is going to have to be something that we explore later on this week here at Locked On Grizzlies because there's a guy down in New Orleans that everybody's fairly confident is available for the Mm. right price. But at the same time, the Grizzlies just played somebody out there in Brooklyn who maybe not a needle mover, but certainly would fit the mold in terms of being a three-point shooter, maybe even a couple of those types up there for the Nets. So I'm, I'm interested. We're going to explore that later on this week here on Lockdown Grizzlies. Let the Michael and I know what you're thinking is three point shooting, three point defense. Is it the three in general that you're concerned about for Memphis? Hit us up. Let us know on X or in the comments below. Today's episode of Lockdown Grizzlies is brought to you by Hims. Guys, sometimes intimate moments can happen spontaneously. We always want to be ready so that we can perform in the bedroom. Hims provides access to treatment so that you can stay ready and get ready longer, giving you that boost of confidence that you can be in the mood any time it strikes. Hims is changing men's health care by providing you with access to affordable sexual health treatments from the comfort of your couch. The process is 100% online. There's no need for uncomfortable doctor's visits. You answer a series of questions on their site, and a medical provider will determine the right treatment for you. If prescribed, your medication ships directly to you in discreet packaging for free. With hundreds of thousands of trusted subscribers with no insurance needed and one low price covering everything from treatments to ongoing care, this is the option that should work for you. Start your free online visit today at hymns.com slash locked on. That's H-I-M-S dot com slash locked on for your personalized treatment options. Hymns.com slash locked on. The products mentioned are chewable compounded products, which are not approved by or verified for safety or effectiveness by the FDA. Prescriptions require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if appropriate. Prescriptions apply. See website for details and important safety information. Subscription required. Price varies based on product and subscription plan. All right. So somebody that is uh, also having a hard time of it is Giannis Antetokounmpo. He is not really feeling it there in mm-hmm. Milwaukee at the moment. The Bucks are struggling. Memphis saw them recently. One of our newsletters, I wrote about how the Grizzlies uh, kind of got their groove back, at least for the time being, uh, against some flailing Eastern Conference contenders. Giannis is on the block, potentially, right? It's certainly not time for that yet. Uh, if Giannis is to be traded by the Milwaukee Bucks, this is from Bavada, uh, at Bavada Official on X, Miami Heat are the favorite, duh, plus 150 in terms of betting odds. The Brooklyn Nets that Memphis just saw, plus 210. Brooklyn has plenty of assets to bring in Giannis if they see fit. The Houston Rockets, which would be terrifying, right? That would not be great defensively if uh, if Giannis was able to go to Houston and dealing with him in division. Same thing can be said of the San Antonio Spurs, who are at plus 600. They are fourth Mm. on these betting odds lists. But – Maybe somewhat surprisingly, partner, they're tied with the Spurs at plus 600 are the Memphis Grizzlies. Now, Mm. I enjoy a good trade machine as much as the next guy, right? And Giannis alongside Jaron Jaw and Desmond Bain, Mm -hmm. that feels like a championship team to me, Mm -hmm. right? Especially Mm -hmm. if you consider all the good work that they've done to build up a core around them that's a little more cost effective. We talked about G.G. Jackson, Vince Williams Jr., Zach Eady on a friendly contract, although you would imagine that they have to trade something, right? And yeah, it's not yeah. like Marcus Smart and Brandon Clark would be enough. So how do you feel about this, Jan? Again, it's not a trade rumor. Nobody's reporting this. This is literally just betting odds. Yeah, but yeah. I'm kind of taken aback. You talked a moment ago about how this team needs three-point shooting. Giannis is still one of the best, what, three to five players on the planet? Yeah. But – he does not check that three-point shooting box, although him and John Morant in the pick and roll would be a lot of fun to watch. It, it will, oh, oh my goodness. That, <laughs> that, that is scary. Uh yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I'm not picking up what, what they're really putting down from the idea of that. And I'm gonna tell you why. Because um if you think about adding Giannis, I'm not moving Jaron Jackson Jr. And I don't know. In my opinion, you, you can't. Can't okay, do. okay, and, and that's where I am. So, if you're not moving Jaron, you just invested this first round pick in Zach Eady. I would definitely don't think they would want to move Zach Eady. 
Now, I want to stress anybody else is fair game for me personally. Uh -huh. Right, like it, what you just said is entirely fair. I don't see yeah. Memphis, especially after what Edie just did against Brooklyn. They see yeah. the improvement each and every day. Mm -hmm. I don't think they're banging down the doors. But this is Giannis we're talking this about is, here. This is, I this feel like, free. what do you need Edie for if you have Giannis? I think that's a fair mm -hmm. question to ask. That there's probably fair responses that I'm sure I'll get inundated with in the comments <laughs> after questioning Zach Edie again, but. I, I think that outside of you. well, I think outside of Jaron, Jaw, and Bain, there shouldn't yeah. be a question, right? We've talked yeah, about that's that. Your, that's your core. It's yeah, that's it's the core. That's the core. Th that, mm -hmm. This is Golden State 2.0. They haven't done any again. Don't need Warriors fans. Oh, this isn't Golden State. Grizzlies haven't won yet. That's not what I'm saying. I'm talking about you've got three guys. Right. That should be your undisputed. Can't touch them. Jaron, mm -hmm. Jaw, and Bain. Yep. Everybody else is fair game, and if the roster keeps rotating through, if you have a legitimate chance, a legitimate shot. To acquire Giannis? What are we talking about here? Man. Oh, I it, it's the I I don't want to move that, Edie. Not yet. Like it's it's way it's way now, because I think what we're we're both in agreement on is if a deal were to like if the if the Grizzlies were to make it happen, he would have to be involved in it, right? Are right. you not ready to move Zach Eady, or are you not ready to move Zach Eady for Giannis is a big, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's one of the great. He, he's essentially a center. He would play the five he's... for Memphis, you would imagine. Mm -hmm. So, are you saying that you're not willing to do it for this particular player? Like, say nah, nah, in nah. some random happenstance, a wing the caliber of Giannis was available. Yeah, Jalen yeah. Jalen Brown. Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown get into a fight in Boston. They, this yep. is all hypothetical, not actually going to happen. Bing, bang, mm -hmm. boom, they're fighting each other. Jalen Brown, one of them has to go. You could get Jason yeah. Tatum or Jalen Brown, probably Jalen Brown. Would you be willing to move Zach Eady for him? Man, uh, who, who's going to rebound the ball? Oh, well, no. uh, and that, That's why I asked the question, and that's why it's so now, interesting to me because you've got a guy – you don't, ED, who could be that, right? No. Could Look, be that. How do I'm, you I'm gonna, handle I'm gonna, the other issues? I'm gonna, I'm gonna go a different direction here because I don't think Zach Eady is your your guy. You would move, uh, but if you, you you keep Zach Eady, this is my 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 thought process with this. If you have Zach Eady, you got Jaron Jackson Jr., you got Dez, you got Ja. Um, we've talked about the log jam a little bit with, on the wing, right? They are clearly they got a lot of talent now. Uh, more than in previous years where they had a lot of players, but guys weren't really producing as much. Jalen Wells is a young, talented player that you got now in in, in the wings. Uh, you got Gigi Jackson. You got Vince Williams. I think you choose between those three, you know, internally. You say, hey, that's the guy we want to be the starter. That's the guy we want to be the starting wing. The other, he's an impact wing who can step into the starting lineup and be a productive player for you off the bench. And whoever the third one is in that pecking order, that's who you go to the Bucks to. And it wouldn't move them unless it was only one of those guys. Don't make me say his name because I, I don't, I don't, that I, I, I love his game, but he is the only one. You know what I'm talking about? You think I'm going to put down? Uh, I think I do, but I'm going to make you say it. Oh, you're going to make me say it. What would be Gigi Jackson? Yeah, this, that's, that's the that's, one. That's. The controllable contract, 19-year-old. D.J. But... Jackson is more valuable than any draft pick the Memphis Grizzlies currently have. Yeah, yeah. that's And that's what I'm saying. At the end of the day, you know, it, again, like you said, this is not anything that's been rumored or really anything like that. We're just talking betting odds. It makes sense to me that the Grizzlies are where they are on the list because if you look at the – like you look at the Rockets roster, right, you see all these young, talented players. Like, sure, the Rockets aren't just out here like, hey, we want to trade Jabari Smith. The Grizzlies aren't here out here saying, oh, you want to trade Gigi Jackson or Zach Eady or anything like that. But as you mentioned, like you just said, if, if certain people come knocking on your door and, and are interested, you know, to the caliber of Giannis, you at least entertain something because you have your core in place. And as good as those guys are right now, they have not elevated to the status of core Grizzlies uh, just yet. I think we could be talking about Zach Eady being in there really soon. Depending on how this year goes with Gigi Jackson, we could be having the same conversation. But as of right now, Zach Kleiman, Taylor Jenkins, and us, we've all made it pretty clear that that core group is Ja, Dez, and Jaron. 
and everything around them can continue to move around and evolve just like it has. And just if you go look at the 2021 22 season, I mean, exactly right. That roster is people probably at that time were saying, Oh, no, we don't want to move the Anthony Mel needs a core piece or Tyus Jones or you know, all these other you know names, and they're gone. DeAnthony Melton was definitely argued for, and perhaps not incorrectly, because DeAnthony DeAnthony was part of that doubling and tripling down on youth that maybe mm, Memphis mm. was uh, a little bit guilty of, but we don't have to revisit past pain. Uh, let DeMichael and I know how you're feeling about these Giannis odds. Again, they are tied for fourth. Uh, Miami, Brooklyn, Houston, and then the Spurs. Memphis tied with the Spurs at plus 600. I don't think we think it makes a ton of sense, but to be continued this conversation – yeah. Grizzlies do have three contracts in particular, Marcus Smart, Brandon Clark, and Luke Kennard, once he's eligible to be traded. Uh, those those uh, could fit into some salary slots, some interesting conversations to be had mm. down the road. Let Michael and I know what you guys are thinking. We're going to preview Grizz Lakers next here on Lockdown Grizzlies. But first, this episode of Lockdown Grizzlies is brought to you by the good folks over at <clears> – <throat> excuse me, by the good folks over at – Built rewards. Listen up, renters. Have you ever felt like you're stuck in this loop of rent payments or just watching your money vanish into thin air? It's time to turn that rent game around and start earning some serious rewards. That's where Built Rewards comes in. Built is breaking ground as a neighborhood rewards program that hooks you up with points on your rent. Every month, pay your rent. Watch the Built points roll in. 500 plus airlines, 700,000 plus hotels and properties. You can put your points toward a flight or a hotel stay jetting off to a dream vacation. You can also use your points to book fitness studio classes, redeem them toward a future rent payment. They are designed to meet your lifestyle. Earn points by paying rent right now when you go to joinbuilt.com slash LockedOnNBA. That's J-O-I-N-B-I-L-T dot com slash LockedOnNBA. Make sure to use our URL so they know that we sent you. Joinbuilt.com slash LockedOnNBA to start earning points with your rent payments today. Today's episode of Lockdown Grizzlies is also brought to you by Game Time Basketball Live. There's nothing like it to Michael. I know you're excited to be back in the arena tonight. Mm -hmm. You have all sorts of folks that come out to the games, the people watching, the sound, the feel of the crowd. I loved going to games in FedEx form. There really was nothing like it. And I know that I can't wait until the next time I get a chance to do that. Maybe I'll use Game Time just for that experience. Game time picks means curation, having it be easier for you to save more on sports, concerts, comedy, theater, and so much more. Toggling on the all-in pricing feature shows you the total up front with no surprise fees at checkout. You can get a panoramic view from your seat in the app before you make that purchase. And your purchase is covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time picks. Download the game time app, create an account, and use the code LOCKDOWNNBA for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem the code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-N-B-A for $20 off. Download game time today. What time is it? Game time. To Michael, the Grizzlies have one of those games coming up where, you know, it was always kind of a joke among uh, myself and my buddy Dave that I had mm -hmm. season tickets with. Uh, this is always one of those ones that, you know, you don't want to say this is how you're going to do it per se, but if you're trying to pay for your season tickets, whenever LeBron James is coming into town or the Lakers, this is a good time to do it. So if there's a lot of you, you sell you sell your ticket for this game. If there's a lot of purple and gold oh, in the building, oh, I may or may you, not. You, have been you were of one of those people buying those Kobe, getting those Kobe Bryant fans in FedEx. Yeah, oh. they were paying. I mean, man, we had seats at the top of the. Uh, it was like section two ten or something like that, row mm -hmm. B. Like they were decent seats. Yeah, yeah. And they were season tickets that were, you know, like $2,000 combined. We mm -hmm. would make $500 just in one that game. night in that one game. So while I understand people's frustration <laughs> with folks like me, I'm a teacher, man. That was good <laughs> money to pay for those season tickets and uh, have a chance to, you know, get next year's tickets paid for. Just don't, uh, don't, let, don't let John hear this. They, they yeah, don't like I'm it. sorry, the John. Players, I apologize. Sorry, guys. Like I'm sorry. Give me $500 and I won't do it again. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, the Grizzlies obviously welcome the Lakers to FedEx Forum tonight. It's going to be an interesting contest. Um, who knows who's going to play for the Grizzlies, right? That's always the choose-your-own-adventure of the injury report. That's you know, very similar. You know, John Conchar being out, obviously the week-to-week -week status yep. of Smart and Bain. Uh, 
Luke Kennard beyond, is close. Yeah. Kennard is close. Mm -hmm. Beyond the injury report, what are some things that you're looking for? You know, Anthony Davis looking like an MVP candidate stands out in my mind. Yeah, uh, I always felt like watching the Lakers uh, is in this last three, four year window. There was another level to Anthony Davis that could be oh, yeah. unlocked as they they kind of reconfigure some things. Like honestly, I thought when they had him at the four when they won the championship, that was that was it. He wants to play the four. So you, you know, you are. I feel like if if a player wants to do something, I'm going to try to put them in that position because you you don't have to question effort and things like that because they're going to give you their best. That's what they want to do. So um, when they used to have them at the four, I think they used to be frightening because Anthony Davis, you know, brought big, broad shoulders, the long wingspan, you know, weak side, more of a weak side defender. Like it, it was scary, and they won a championship uh, playing that way. And then of course, you know. They try to adjust to the, the new modern NBA or whatever, put him at the five. And there are advantages there because even though he's not as quick as he once was, he's still, you know, much more mobile than a lot more of these guys, which brings me into my next point. Um, this is going to be an interesting game for, for Zach Eady. This is going to be a really interesting matchup in terms of how much Taylor Jenkins lets him play. Um I say that because we saw with Vucevic. Um, if you go watch, this isn't even me. Just I, I was sitting right there and I re watched the game. Vucevic beat him off the dribble a couple times, and I haven't really thought of him as like just the quickest guy in the world. But he is, you know, very deceptive with his movements, ball fakes, uh, very good footwork, all of that. Anthony Davis is a whole nother level uh, beyond that. Um, but. I think it's going to be a fun matchup. You know, Zaggy's coming off 25 and 12, like you said, numbers, uh, you know, for a rookie, 90% from field to four blocks, only matched by Hakeem Olajuwon as a rookie before, and that's one of the best to ever do it. So uh, that matchup, you know, I always got to pick out a matchup for the most part, and that's the matchup that intrigues me the most. Uh, Zach Eady, Anthony Davis, but Taylor Jenkins is a part of that matchup too. How much is he going to let him play? Is he going to be first quarter? Anthony Davis gets off and scores 14 points, and we only see Edie for eight more minutes in the game, or is he going to say, "Oh, this is a good learning experience. Let's let's let let's let you go." Or does he, Zach Edie is getting the better of him, and does Taylor Jenkins trust Zach Edie in the fourth quarter when LeBron James, as we've seen this, so LeBron James is so good with his mind. What he did against the Grizzlies and several other teams, but in that playoff series. A couple years ago, LeBron pretty much dictated in the last couple minutes of the game who the Grizzlies could have on the floor. Luke Kennard would be on the bench. We talked about it on here, Joe. You remember we were saying, why not Luke Kennard for Dylan Brooks down the stretch of that game where Dylan Brooks wasn't making a shot at all and they were pretty much daring him to shoot. And Taylor Jenkins said, you know, paraphrasing, he didn't say it exactly like this, but pretty much what he said was, you got John Moran on the floor, who's not really a good defender. LeBron is hunting that matchup every possession. So you got Xavier Tillman. You got Jaron Jackson Jr., Desmond Bain. Those guys are capable in Dylan Brooks. You cannot have two guys out there where it says, oh, LeBron could toast them at any moment. So uh, Taylor Jenkins is going to be a big part of this as well because uh, you you can bet if Zach Eadie's in the game, late in the game in this case, LeBron's going to try him out a couple times. But um, I, I'm I'm anxious to see how Zach Eady handles the assignment. For me, if you're still dealing in a world where Desmond Bain, Marcus Smart, Luke Kennard, Vince Williams Jr., and Gigi Jackson are out, who cares? Let Zach Eady play. Let the yeah. kid have a chance and let him you. learn by doing. Will that actually happen? The past eight games kind of show us that uh, Taylor Jenkins <laughs> has a pretty pretty quick trigger on getting Eady out of those contests if he thinks that Memphis is in trouble. But you know who's going to be up for this game? John Morant. Because John Morant loves playing against LeBron. He hates the Lakers, or at least he did in that playoff series. Uh, it's going to be a fun one to watch there in FedEx Forum. I'm looking forward to it. I know you are as well. Hopefully you guys mm -hmm. are going to be there either in person or you're going to be hanging out watching it along with me and others on, uh, on TV, streaming, wherever it is you get these games. So Grizzlies-Lakers tonight should be a good one. Another thing that's going to be a good one is our Thursday edition of Locked On Grizzlies. DeMichael, you'll be flying solo for that one, covering Grizzlies Lakers for the commercial appeal as the beat writer, of course. But you'll also be talking about it from the Locked On Grizzlies perspective. Looking forward to that episode. 
Yeah, uh, I can't wait. It, it, it's it's going to be um, a lot of good content. We'll leave it at that. It's going to be hashtag a content. Lot, a lot of good content, but uh, but yeah, Grizzlies Lakers is is always a big deal. And um, one thing that I've learned covering that game over the last few years is that uh, while well, we talk, we touched on it a little bit, but uh, yeah, Grizzlies players, you know, they get up for these games. Like we've seen Jaw have some amazing plays. You know, the ball he. he caught off the backboard, the block shot, mm-hmm. you know, it was against the Lakers. And you remember the whole, uh, the, we, the footsteps thing with LeBron James and Desmond Bain and, and those guys. And last season, most people won't remember this, but uh, when all the Grizzlies guys are on the bench and uh, they were hurt and LeBron uh, made a, I, I forget exactly what was it. I think it was like a last second shot. Uh, not exactly last second, but he, like, put the game away. Right. And he goes in front of the Grizzlies bench, and, you know, he's doing this little celebration. And Desmond Bain pushed him. Mm-hmm. And, and Job was standing right there, too. And, you know, they both were injured and out or whatever. And, when and you know, I talked to Des about it after the game. And, um, you know, I, I thought he was joking when he pushed him, you know. And so oh. I, I approached him. He was, no, he was like, I don't know why he was talking to me. So, so yeah, this this is one of those games they get up for. I love, I love Grizzlies-Lakers matchups. Grizzlies Lakers is going to be fun, and it's also going to be fun in our Grizzlies newsletter. Make sure you're checking out the Locked on Grizzlies newsletter. Your favorite podcast now has a newsletter, a one-stop shop for ultimate team and league coverage delivered right to your inbox. Sign up for free now at LockedOnDaily.com. That's LockedOnDaily.com. Start your day with the all-new free Locked on Grizzlies newsletter. Make sure you're liking, commenting, rating, reviewing, subscribing wherever you get podcasts. Locked On Grizzlies is a proud member of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team, each and every single day. Apple, Spotify, Amazon, YouTube, it is all good. Thank you for checking out the show and being an every day or each and every time an episode drops. For DeMichael, I'm Joe. We'll catch you next time. Stay locked in. Enjoy Grizzlies Lakers. If you're one of those folks that sold your tickets, don't worry about it. I would have done the exact same thing. If you're going, have fun. We'll catch you next time. See you.